So I just saw the YouTube subscriber account reach 500,000. I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support so far before we begin today's video. And also, what do we have? I think it's the, oh, it's the 100,000 subscriber. Do you remember your first subscriber? Your hundredth, your thousandth, chances are you do. And you know, you definitely remember your hundredth thousand subscriber. Your fans may have found you while searching YouTube. Learn about you through a friend or maybe you showed up as a recommended video. No matter how they came to your channel, your audience stayed and their numbers increased because of you and the community you've built. We're proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. That's nice. Nyomo. Woo! Well, there it is. Wow. Look at me filming with my phone. China Insider with David Zhang for passing 100,000 subscriber. YouTube. And it's a nice little mirror. Hello. That's nice. Let's, let's in the back. Well, that's nice. And uh, I'm going to cherish that as a really important milestone, like YouTube said. But also, uh, again, just a big shout out to you guys for supporting this channel. And uh, if you want to see more content, make sure you're uh, leaving the comments about what you like to see next. And uh, yeah, I'll occasionally be also doing a lot of polls on the communities tab. And so you can check there and you can vote on some topics. Today, we're going to be discussing the ongoing situation with Israel. So I'll see you there. What does the ongoing Israel war against Hamas have to tell us about the grand ambition of the Chinese Communist Party? And what exactly is the relationship and background between China and the rest of the countries involved in this conflict right now? Let's talk about it. As we speak, at the time of filming, Netanyahu just concluded his press conference and he's made an announcement that Israel will finish what Hamas started. It's very likely that Hamas will meet its demise, but by doing so could risk a potential escalation in the region. So I want to talk about what China wants to see and what its role is. Uh, in this particular conflict. We've seen horrible images and videos of the Hamas attack in southern Israel, taking women and children as hostage, and they're now even trying to uh, publicly live stream the execution of these hostages, warning that if Israel does not stop airstrikes. And Israel is planning a ground invasion as we speak, as well as continued airstrike and uh, door knocking for these particular buildings in Gaza. I just want to make it clear, Hamas started this. And so whatever happens from this point on, there has to be a reason why Hamas chose this particular moment to attack Israel. But before we get to that, one particular video stood out to me. This woman here, her first name is Noah, and she on camera here, she's seen taken away at essentially being a hostage. And uh, it was found out that she's actually half Chinese. She's half Jewish, half Chinese and born in Beijing. So the Israel embassy to China took the the situation to the Chinese internet. Unfortunately, instead of getting sympathy, it, it, it was a bunch of comments very much denying her existence as a Chinese person and wishing her death and that sort of thing. It's, it's a horrible situation. But if we consider another woman, Eileen Gu, who's also half Chinese, she got really warm reception in China. So the hatred for the Israeli uh, people in China is, and I guess the support for the Palestinian people in China and her tragic hostage situation is uh, in development. Now, th there's must be a reason why the Chinese Communist Party is calling for the so-called two state solution. What it is, is basically the coexistence, proposed coexistence of Palestine and Israel at the same time. Now, if we know anything about coexistence, it's that the CCP has lied about coexistence. One country, two system with Hong Kong. Look at what happened. Hong Kong has essentially was invaded and taken over by the CCP in 2019. And they're trying to do the same thing with Taiwan. So the CCP is the last entity on earth to that should talk about two states or the so-called solution to the problem. But they want to because they're trying to act as the peaceful negotiator to end the conflict. So far, the attitude from the Chinese Communist Party has mostly been vague. They're saying to cease fire, stop the killing of children and women. But uh, other than that, they have not directly condemned Hamas. And I'll talk a bit more about why that is the case, as well as they're trying to play a nice role towards uh, Israel at the same time. Now, this sounds really familiar to you, right? Think back to the Ukraine war. China has essentially, until this day, or still uh, as we speak, maintained that they are neutral in the sense of they do not pick a side, but they have not offered any strong criticism of Putin or Russia in the invasion. And in fact, while we're talking about the invasion of Ukraine, think back to 2022. Putin went to Beijing for the Winter Olympics in Beijing, and right after that, he invaded Ukraine. And now we saw the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, who went to the Hangzhou Asian Games. After he left, uh, Hamas launched the attack of Israel. So what's with the Xi Jinping regime 
inviting these dictators and then who are funding a war or directly involved in the war, inviting them to China to watch a sports uh, competition and then afterwards having them invade some other country. But if we just pull everything back a little bit, right, step back and we look at the grand picture, we're seeing that clearly this is much bigger than just Israel and the Palestine long-term conflict. Uh, there's, there's actually a bigger goal here. What we're seeing is the CCP putting leashes on these different countries, whether that's Russia invading Ukraine, whether that's with Iran and funding terrorism in the Middle East or with North Korea and the nuclear threat. All of these, they're trying to become distractors for the CCP to use against the United States. Now, let's specifically talk about Iran, who is a staunch ally, strategic ally of the CCP. And uh, they are the main pe uh, country who's funding the Hamas terrorism activity, as well as supplying them with weapons and supplies and training and the technology needed for them to attack Israel. Iran is part of China's new axis of evil, and they've essentially established one of the objectives for this alternative, uh, I guess you call it alternative world order or this axis uh, of power is that they are trying to displace the United States in one way or another. And so for Iran, particularly, it's funding terrorism activities in the Middle East, destabilizing the region, creating distractions for China, who is, again, in a bad situation right now. But behind Iran, who is funding terrorism, is a bigger person uh, to who has more money, which is the CCP. In 2021, Wang Yi, then foreign minister, went to Iran and signed a 25-year deal, and that was worth 400 billion US dollars. And guess where that money is being used on? The CCP at the same time is also trying to drive a direct wedge in the relationship between Israel and the United States, because Israel has a very complicated uh, Middle Eastern geopolitical situation, as well as with China. Israel is very close with China, with Russia, as well as uh, different countries. But the point here is that the CCP is trying to take control, trying to decrease the influence of the United States in the region. For example, they convinced the Saudis to work with Iran to trade more oil with China instead of with the United States. They're trying to drive the narrative that the U.S. is losing its place in the world and that the leader taking over will be the CCP. While at the same time, they're downplaying the direct involvement, which is through money and through teaching Iran these technologies that uh, are used then to fund other terrorist groups and trying to create the appearance of neutrality. But in reality, they are the reason or the main uh, planner or instigator of this whole event. And just an announcement before we continue, uh, on October 22nd, which is Sunday, uh, there will be two showings of Shen Yun Symphony, which is the live orchestra of Shen Yun Performing Arts, who uh, every year goes on tour. But uh, they'll be doing a special one day only performance, two shows at the Lincoln Center in New York City. Now, I already got my tickets and uh, it's going out really fast. So make sure you get yours and I might be able to see you there. Now, if you don't know what Shen Yun Orchestra is, it's uh, Shen Yun Performing Arts, the classical dance troupe from New York, and they do their yearly tour. And so the orchestra is putting on a one day performance at the Lincoln Center. And this is going to be uh, drawing the inspiration from 5,000 years of Chinese culture, a blend of the Chinese instruments with Western ensembles, and it's a, a lot of the original music that you get to hear from the live orchestra during the plays, uh, but uh, now they're doing a special performance for this. I'll be putting the link in the description so you can get tickets, and uh, I'll see you there. Now, the Chinese foreign ministry is very quick to declare China as the peaceful entity, the one that can solve the problems or act as mediators or negotiators for both sides. So on paper, it looks like China is pretending to be the peace negotiator, but behind the scenes, they are working to fund these destabilizing activities in the region. In Europe, you have Putin who is distracting the Europeans with the invasion of Ukraine. And then in Asia, you have the threat of the nuclear weapons from North Korea. And in the Middle East, you have Iran who's funding these activities. And then you basically want to divert all the attentions away from Asia and move that elsewhere around the world where the U.S. has to create more distractions or more responses to those distractions. And that will decrease the amount of attention in places like Taiwan. At this point, you realize that Hamas's military power is much, much, much less than that of Israel's. So it's asymmetric in that uh, aspect. So why would Hamas suddenly decide to attack Israel? Now, there could be issues with intelligence failure, how apparently the Israeli force didn't know that the attack was coming, which led to the death of 250 at a music festival in South, uh, southern Israel, but still does not make sense why Hamas, after the last defeat not too long ago, is now trying to start another war. And Israel has essentially just declared war, full-on war against Hamas. So what made them so 
dumb or so willing to sacrifice uh, their own lives for the achievement of Iran or perhaps the CCP. Well, if you remember, all of Iran's funding for terrorism activities in the Middle East, the, uh, for example, the drone program, the technology for that has been all, been, uh, all been provided by China. So in reality, China is the end or the, the top of the funnel that's giving everything downwards, right? It's leaking or streaming down these uh, technologies or fundings. At the same time, Israel, Palestine, Iran, they all have a relationship with China. And so this is a good opportunity to exploit the differences with the United States and Israel. Well, I think that Hamas will ultimately be destroyed because the plan has backfired with their attack. Think back 22 years. What happened is after 9-11, the biggest beneficiary was the CCP. Uh, they got what they call is the golden decade from the 2001 to 2011. Uh, actually, it's more like the golden decades because after from 2001 to 2021, uh, they've been able to develop their economy from a regular developing country to a global superpower. And uh, this is all because the United States was distracted with the war on terror. They were focused on the Middle East while China was given the opportunity to develop. And so they want to create that window of opportunity once again, given the fact that China's economy right now is at its worst state. But although this politically does not affect Xi Jinping, having some breathing room or a buffer zone between that and a direct confronta uh, confrontation with the U.S. is still really good for the CCP. Like I said, politically, Xi Jinping does not feel threatened by the bad economy, but making moves or exporting the attention or the pressure from internally to the outside world and pin it on the United States is a great way for the CCP to alleviate or to divert the attention everywhere away from China. Now, this whole thing has been divided into three portions, right? Hamas has their own manufacturing capabilities for these rockets that are, that are launching into Israel. Uh, they also have weapons that are being funded by Iran. And then there's also China who maintains neutrality, but, neutrality, but in reality, they are the biggest behind the scenes uh, force behind this invasion. I don't think the plan is going to work out simply because Hamas is not a force that's going to match up to that of Israel. But what I think they're banking on is that escalation will happen, meaning that even after Hamas has been destroyed, the rest of the extremist groups around the area, like the Hezbollah or the al Quds, they will also act and trying to attack Israel, forcing essentially the region to become a, a war uh, over multiple different countries. Now, the CCP is saying that maybe the United States cannot afford a two front war or a three front war in that there's two things happening at once. Right. You already have the aid for Ukraine. Now you have to support Israel. And now you have the domestic opposition to providing fundings to those different areas. Would this change the fact or distract the United States from its directing effort against the protection of Taiwan? While we can argue what constitutes as the more important funding aspect, whether that's Israel or Ukraine, or we can argue if boots on the ground is what constitutes at, as the front of the war. Uh, what we can argue is that Israel's position as the key Middle Eastern ally for the United States outweighs that of Ukraine. And from a strategic point of view, protecting Israel's interest is much more important for the United States than it is for Ukraine. And so from this aspect, we can argue that Israel's uh, funding for Israel is much more important. Seeing this, we're now getting the news that the Gerald Ford class carrier strike group has moved into the Mediterranean Sea, which is to assist Israel with the ever changing situation in the region. Now, Mao Zedong famously said for a man, it's better to cut off one of his fingers than to injure all 10 of his fingers. Or in the case of a military, an army, it's better to crush and destroy one division than to defeat and not destroy 10 divisions. What he's saying here is basically, if you can get rid of one very strong part of this alliance, whether that's for the CCP or the United States, it works both ways. It's better to crush that one strong alliance than to destroy or to injure multiple at the same time, because the impact is uh, bigger when you just focus on one. So for China right now, their goal is to isolate the Israel and US relationship, trying to create this diplomatic situation internationally where they're going to alienate Israel's position and condemn them for attacking Gaza. And then for the United States, if they're not strong in their support for Israel, that could cause a rift between Israel and the United States. But for the United States, on the other hand, what they're trying to do is potentially stop uh, the country of Iran from further activities in the region. Now, again, this all risks an escalation and a confrontation, which nobody knows where it could be heading, given the fact that Iran is, uh, this could very much blow into a major scale war. Now, the Israeli government has warned that if Hezbollah decides to step in, uh, they're already fighting in the border, 
then uh, the, the United States will assist Israel in destroying Syria and removing the al-Assad regime, and uh, as that is another extremist group. The question we don't know too much about is what is the CCP banking on in terms of the calculated risk to reward for the U.S.? Uh, if you step in too much, then that is an involvement. Potentially, you could be uh, getting yourself into a, another war. Well, the biggest problem is in Taiwan, and that's coming up. But if you do not support, what level of aid are you planning on giving to Israel? Is it just replenishing their Iron Dome defense system, or is it giving more money to Israel? And what is exactly needed here and what does the region look like going forward so all these factors are going to get revealed in the coming days but as we speak now the, the ccp is banking on something to happen in this particular case an alternative explanation is that the ccp simply needs to create a distraction a long-term distraction where israel is locked in a conflict with majoring neighbor countries that are uh, muslim countries and they are just like ukraine and russia coming to a stalemate after a year or two of uh, the war and by that point it drags many other countries into the conflict and give again attention to this area instead of in asia and so maybe Maybe the CCP sees that it's not satisfied with just one distraction, again, that is Russia. It needs to create a second one with Iran now locked into this position as well. And that comes with the question, does China want to invade Taiwan right now? Well, it's unlikely at this moment they're going to launch an invasion, but the next point to watch or the next date is 2024 in January. And that's when the new Taiwan president will be announced uh, after the election, which means by then we'll know what strategy the CCP will play. Uh, I've done a few videos in the past, so I'll link one here. But the idea is that they need to do this before 2027 as Xi Jinping is getting old. Age is a factor, but he also needs to finish this. Otherwise, he cannot get his fourth term because uh, I think he's banking on the Taiwan invasion to solidify his political legacy within the party. What about the question with North Korea? Could they also use this opportunity to invade the South? Well, that's another asymmetric situation where North Korea, in this case, will be like Hamas. They're going to, if they do anything militarily, the South, with its more military might, will be able to uh, crush the invasion today. But that also might be a distraction factor. So we'll have to see if they make a move. I really don't think Kim Jong-un at this moment is dumb enough to become a sacrifice for Xi Jinping. So in the end, the overall objective of, of the CCP is to create more distractors for the U.S. so that it can stop worrying about China and the invasion of Taiwan. And then whether this is going to come out with a public narrative or, or a public opinion warfare where the CCP plays as the, uh, you know, with a moral high ground trying to negotiate peace, well, we'll have to see with that. But I don't think the U.S. cares as much right now. What I think the West particularly cares more about is how Israel will handle the upcoming invasion of Gaza and what the situation will be there, considering that now water, electricity, and everything has been cut off for the residents, the two million people inside Gaza. And so will this become a flow, full scale or an escalation into something bigger? I think that's the main point to watch right now. All right, that's it today for the episode on Israel and what China is trying to do to uh, achieve destabilization in the Middle East. I'm David Zhang, this is China Insider. Hope you enjoy the content. Leave a like, comment below your thoughts on this topic and subscribe to our channel. All right, until next time.